a one minute rebuttal from the Pirate Party. Well, Ian, thanks uh, first and foremost for counting the number of hamburgers that we handed out the other night. Um, I think this is, you know, neither one of the tickets have spent a whole lot of money this year. We had a very small ticket fee of $100 to run, we, and we talk about reform and opportunity and reaching out to students saying every student can run. When we looked at the elections code this year, me and Ron talked about a couple things we wanted to change and be able to get all the money uh, that, you, that you can spend on election donated instead of having to spend any money out of your pocket. Uh, I think we've got five governors that spent under $150. We have a few governors that spent more because of uh, T-shirts. That's where we spent most of our money. Also, we sold uh, most of our T-shirts. Uh, we, we donated one dollar off of all the T-shirts. We got them for four dollars. We sold them for five, and uh, donating one of those dollars to Women Against Rape, giving back to one of the student organizations. When we campaign for students, we mean it, and in that way we subsidize costs by selling our shirts and actually giving back to the student body instead of just giving out candy. No, we're going to sell back to the student body in order to help the student body. Okay. Mountain, your choice, you have a 30 second reply. Well, thank you. I will say we have given out quite a lot of candy in the past week, which is pretty fun to hand out, and I know you guys enjoy it. But, you know, it's a way of catching people's attention. If I can give someone a piece of candy, they're going to stop, and they're going to listen to me, and I'm going to hand them a pamphlet that says my platform and my views and what I want to do to serve the student body. If I can get every student to stop to get a Laffy Taffy or a Tootsie Roll, fine. It'll give me 30 seconds to give them what I stand for and what I want to do for them, and maybe they'll listen, and maybe voters will vote. So, thank you. This question is for the Pirate Party. What is your position concerning the proposed smoking ban and the obvious infringement of individual rights on public property? Well, this is a tough question. It will make some people in the crowd mad no matter what I say. But uh, times are changing. You can see it all around America. Uh, West Virginia is usually behind in, in these changes. Uh, we need to go to a, a healthy campus, uh, and I think the smoking ban is part of that. It, the, but the smoking ban needs to be progressive. First and foremost, we need to start enforcing the smoking policy that we have uh, here on campus. You're not supposed to smoke within a certain distance from the door, but all the ashtrays are right beside the door, so how can you blame the smokers? Uh, we need to have a... Uh, it needs to be progressive and, and start, I just said all that, but, uh, and then move to a different stage and have smoking booths, uh, maybe 150 feet away, maybe you can't smoke coming up life science uh, stairs, I know that's a pain for everyone, I definitely don't like uh, walking behind five smokers when I can barely make it up the stairs, uh, so, and, then, and then limit off maybe a year or two years and have a plan in place uh, to implement. The progress with the smoking ban has to be one step at a time. You cannot do it overnight. And I'm very proud to say I'm one of the governors who, regardless of where you stand on the issue, supported a resolution and made an amendment to a resolution that said we need more discussion and more student input. With this being said, we've, we've actually, I've actually been speaking with uh, SSDP, Students for Sensible Drug Policy, for now probably a good semester, and trying to get their involvement along with uh, Ms. Abby Sabonia, current governor, working on this issue. We have to make sure that the smoking ban policy, whatever it is, is very fair to students and does not leave anyone out and does not make a change overnight. Because that, if we do it overnight, it disadvantages a lot. And with that being said, we need to promote awareness for quitting programs and also programs for smokers. So you make the steps progressive in order for a smooth transition instead of causing a night of hell overnight. That's absolutely terrible idea. It has to be progressive, but we also need to lead to a healthy campus here at WVU. All right, well, I um, am proud to say that I am one of the governors that signed on to the original smoking, um, smoking ban that we had in SGA this year. I think the most important thing about big issues like the smoking ban are that we have a qualified task force that are looking at the issues. And this year we do have Abby Sabonia and John Bond examining the smoking ban. I think one of the most important things is that we, if we do decide to do a smoking ban, that we support the students who are quitting to smoke. You know, put, put things in place that help them. We can't expect them to stop overnight, quit cold turkey. Let them go to student health. Let them get the services that they need to be able to quit. We need to support the students on this campus, and if we're going to have to ask them to quit smoking, we're going to have to help them quit smoking first. So, thank you. I mentioned 
our involvement with SSDP earlier, and this is many of the ways of what I was speaking about when we said opportunity. Instead of me or Chris saying, hey, listen, we're going to step in on this issue and do everything ourselves. No, we're going to extend it openly to the student body. Students who know what is going on, students who are there for a sensible drug policy and get their involvement so something fair is established, not, not just for what we think is right, but for what every student on this campus think is right. The next question is for Mountaineer Choice. How do you lobby as SGA for funding some of the main platforms that both parties have, such as the new Student Health Center, uh, club sports funding, in the middle of a 3.5% budget cut? That's a very good question. I think it's, it's important to, to say that um, with, with the economy in, in, its, in the state that it, it is and with our state government recently dropping our, our funding, it's important that we as student government make sure that these um, progressive initiatives don't come out of the pockets of our students. Um, we want to we wanna make sure that a, a program like the, the new health center is self-sufficient so we have pharmacies and stores and things like that that make money so that you're not just building a forty million dollar facility that, that is coming out of the pockets of the students. I think that we also need to, to lobby for f uh, federal and state grants. Um, if, they're, if they're giving stimulus money, why not ask for it? Um, so that's one of the things that we want to do to fund these progressive issues, um, is make sure that we're seeking all the money that we can and making sure that it's not coming out of the pockets of our students. Um, we have to realize also that uh, you know, we are in a recession. Uh, there's families out there that would like to buy a home, but they can't necessarily buy a home this year um, because the economy is not, not the, uh, in the right spot. Um, so we need to make sure that before we do anything, uh, before we do anything to, that will cause debt for our students and debt for our university, we make sure we, we have the money uh, coming from a place that's not our students' pockets, and it's, and it's coming from a place uh, so that we are financially secure before we make these progressive initiatives. Uh, the first thing to understand is that our country, our state, and our university is in a recession. And during these times, we're not going to build any big new things for us. We, can, we can't, we don't have the money. We, ha we do need to lobby for uh, federal grants, state grants, and uh, private donors. Maybe a partnership with a, uh, some type of uh, health services place uh, would help out. Um, but the main thing we do need, to, uh, do need to realize is it cannot come on the students. Uh, you know, the state's in a recession, the university's in a recession, also families of West Virginians are in a recession. With that being said, we as an administration of elected will practice a fiscally conservative policy. For example, during stress busters week, how many of you remember seeing those non-biodegradable non sustainability stress balls? Waste of money. Students don't use that for anything. We as Student Government Association must practice a fiscally conservative calendar for ourselves so that we budget appropriately and spend money on things that really matter instead of spending money on things that don't help students at all. I think that uh, both, both parties here are in agreement that we can't afford to have students paying for our new initiatives. Um, and, and I also want to take that one step further in saying that we have a governor, A.J. Warren, who's working on saving uh, students money. Um, you know, the students are paying for a lot, um, we, and we de certainly don't want them to pay for uh, extra extravagant buildings. We want to save them money. Uh, we want to make sure that you guys are getting uh, benefits for the money that you're pouring into Morgantown. So we, we definitely have, uh, we want to make sure we're fiscally conservative, and A.J. Warren's going to help us do that. This next question is directed uh, towards a pirate party. Uh, student government candidates are very visible during election week, but many students complain about not seeing them after elections. How will you make sure that you and uh, the Board of Governors are still apparent to the students who you're supposed to be representing? One, I would say look at our record. For example, almost every student government and every, every student organization that I visited last year while campaigning for Board of Governor, I've kept in contact with. How do you think I got in contact with SSDP? Why do you think I've extended opportunities for Red and Amon John McWilliams to connect with all these student organizations? If you ask Italian Club, if you ask Young Democrats, if you ask the Chinese Club, the Professional Business Ethics Club, I can keep on going on and on and on. I'm pretty, 
I stay in contact with over 20 organizations on campus 